in, in relation to this game, and, and fortunately I just get to sit here, but you guys have to break it down. Can, so, can, you, can you find a way for Look past last weekend, or was that a trend of uh, where, where this LSU team maybe is right now as, as the season comes to an end? I, I will say offensively, it did look like LSU was trending downward offensively. I mean, especially when you look at, what was it, 13 points versus Arkansas, yeah. an Arkansas team that does not tackle this year. <laughs> just, not they decided all. we're not going to do it anymore. They were banged up. It was a banged up unit, and you only muster 13 points. That didn't look good. Then you drop the game versus A&M. That was concerning. It, you, it is kind of hard to conjure a scenario where you're going, okay, LSU scoring points. But because Georgia has chosen for quarters at a time this year sometimes to shut it to down. just kind of – yeah, or, or, or gift the ball back over to their opposition right. mm -hmm. that LSU's plenty good enough to take advantage of Georgia miscues. I do think it would take that. I do think that Georgia would have to play poorly for an extended period of time, maybe even longer, not as long as they did versus Missouri. LSU beats Georgia mm -hmm. if they decide to play for three and a half quarters bad football. But it would take that, I think, for it to be competitive in this ballgame based on what we saw from LSU the second half of the season, especially the last quarter. The turnovers, like Stench is saying, and also LSU being back in a, uh, a position of comfort where they are now the hunter again instead of being the hunted. For all year long, nobody expected LSU to be great, and they were just kind of just getting by, just beating teams here and there, completely under the radar. And all of a sudden, they beat Alabama and became the team that is hunted. They didn't handle that great. That once they beat Alabama, they really Good point. haven't played well since then, offensively specifically. So now you're back in a comfortable position where now you get to be under the radar, you get to be the underdog, and you're no longer the team that is hunted. So now we can just go cut it loose. And so when you have a sense where I don't have to, I don't worry about anything, I don't have to think about anything, I can just go play. That's where LSU has flourished this year. And if, if Stetson Bennett doesn't take care of the football, that's when games have been close for Georgia. As long as he takes care of business, Georgia will take care of business. And, and Stance, I'm, I go to you on this because you win the national championship, but Kirby Smart's talking about how nobody on this team has won an SEC championship. I realize that's an important deal, especially here at the SEC championship. But Georgia's been talking about returning to the playoffs all year. Take us in that locker room right now. And is winning this game important enough to overcome what happened here a year ago. I realize that was a, a different setup, but w what about winning the SEC? I think it matters a lot. I really do. I, th I think when you hear, especially about this, some of these recruiting stories or teams that are now going to be entering this conference in a couple of years, the ability to even say, hey, we play in the Southeastern Conference. For you to be able to say, we're the champions of the Southeastern Conference. That means something. Now, you might be the champion of some of these other conferences, and people are like, yes, and. But in college football especially, and given this year, the depth that we've had. So you've got uh, Tennessee, Alabama, LSU, Georgia. You can consider those as four elite teams relative to the college football landscape, recent performances notwithstanding. The fact that you can come out as a champion, and, of course, they ran the table in the regular season, but we don't play a round-robin schedule in this conference, so eventually you have, to, you have to compete against the best of the other division. That means something. And in the past, even in the BCS era, it was a springboard. In fact, it was almost a de facto championship right. game. Mm. You can't say that. Or you can't make that argument this year. and Nobody would buy it. What you can say this year, though, is that if you leave this conference as a champion, that means more than being a champion of any other conference, maybe not from a playoff implication standpoint, but when you look at college football landscape at large, if you won the Southeastern Conference, then you are among the best teams in the country. You might not ultimately win the national title, but you got to win the championships that are in front of you. You can't afford to skip the division championship. you got no business thinking that you can skip a conference championship. There are no promises that you will ultimately win that national title. you got to win the ones that you can actually play for. Georgia and LSU gets to play for a conference championship tomorrow. That will absolutely mean a lot to both of those programs. I think it means even more because if you win tomorrow – the road to the championship comes through Georgia. You, you get the next round. Stay here. In Georgia. So the road. That, that's what I'm talking about. Right, get get back the there. fine bombers going today. Yes. The road <laughs> to the championship goes through this state. You have literally two more home games if you handle your business tomorrow 
and the next one in the playoffs. So that is what's so important for Georgia to make sure they win tomorrow. I think it means everything in the world for Georgia. George, Georgia's going to keep on, and they will have won more games in Atlanta than Georgia Tech did this year. I think that that another, you're going to go there? That might, you're going to go there? might be true. I'm like, this is the ACC championship. <laughs> yeah. say whatever uh, we want. By the way, and, and, and either there. equal to or better than the Falcons. <laughs> oh, oh that's another about thing. That. Paul, everybody <laughs> should be also excited because the Mercedes, uh, Mercedes Benz yes, yeah. Dome tomorrow will have Chick-fil-A available, which they do not have for the Atlanta Falcons game. So, oh, as a, a former point. Saints player, <laughs> anytime I can take a dig they, at they the Falcons, they, they I got to do They it. need oh, uh, bourbon for this Falcons game. <laughs> anyway, guys. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.